I want to learn HTML. Wait, what's the thing we used in well, HTML? That's what we did in Computer Science Discoveries. What's Computer Science Discoveries? CS Discoveries, that's the class that I took sophomore year. Is that the, is that the AP oh. one? That's the computer, no, it's not AP. Cause I, I, the AP one? I switched out of AP Euro and the only one that was open was CS Discoveries. Oh, oh no, AP computer. CS, the, yeah, no, the only, so the two APs now are AP CSA and AP CSP. Principles. Principles is JavaScript and then CSA is Java. Hey guys, how, how we doing? Hello. All right. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Thanks for inviting us down. Of yeah. Course, sir. Why don't you guys uh, talk a little about how you got to the academy. All right, so uh, I'll start off. Um, I mean, I was originally looking for military boarding schools after uh, my friend got in trouble with his mom. And uh, she said, I'm gonna send you to a military boarding school if you don't shape up. And I was like, that sounds like a great idea. <laughs> so I went up, started looking online, um, saw a top 10 list and Army Navy Academy was the first one. And I was like, guess I gotta try it out. I. Uh I was having a really rough time in my freshman year, and I'd always loved the military, so I decided to, you know, just Google uh, military academies, and similar to him, yep. Army Navy came up. So I, I came and toured Army Navy. He actually gave me my tour. That's right. And uh, I, I loved <laughs> oh, I was, the school. I was your mentor, you know. You were my mentor, and then he mentor. gave me my tour. <laughs> um, directly after the tour, I applied. That night, you guys accepted me, and then that Friday, I was attending school. You came in mid-year, right, Jenkins? Yeah, I came halfway through my soft, my freshman year, actually. Uh, the beginning at my regular high school, it just was not the place for me. It didn't work well for uh, what I wanted to do. And originally when my dad brought up the idea of going to military school, I was completely against it. I didn't want to do that. It just seems like <laughs> the stereotype. It just seems <laughs> like I don't want to do it. Stereotype's pretty bad. But, uh, <laughs> then I went to this air show uh, in Huntington Beach, and it was at the Blue Angels. And that gave me the idea and the goal to become... Uh, an aviator in the Navy. And so then I became motivated and I actually decided to agree with my dad and come to Army Navy Academy. Oh, you came here early, right? Yeah, I came eighth here grade? earlier yeah. than you guys in eighth grade. Uh, <laughs> at, I, unlike your story, Grant, I got the story of, I'm gonna send you to military school. <laughs> Try it, well, now I'm here. And so <laughs> I had like, I knew, I knew that I needed somewhere with more structure. So my mom was like, you're gonna go to military school. I didn't try to fight it. Uh, eventually just toured the campus. Uh, Hunter did my tour, Hunter Edmund. Came here, uh, eventually like fell in love with Echo and all that stuff, went to Charlie, eventually grew into the person I'm today. Whose impact did you, like made the most impact on you during uh, your time here? I would say for me, it has to have been Mass R in Salisbury. Okay. So I came here at Camp Challenge. That was another uh, thing that I had to do before, before my parents would let me come here to make right. sure I was serious about it. So I came here for the two weeks and um, I ended up loving it. And Mass R was my, um, I guess, leader for that group. And I was like, I love this guy. Like, I hope he works here. I show up on the first day. He's like, my name is Master in Salisbury. I'm your tack. And I'm like, sir, I know you. I know you from the camp. And then he's like, oh my gosh. And <laughs> ended up just like talking to him a lot. And he's one of my biggest mentors. So okay. definitely has to be him. Okay. Someone I think with the largest impact on me was Mr. Dom. Mm. Um, I had a very close relationship with Mr. Dom. He was basically a bigger brother to me, an older brother to me. He guided me through everything last year, the year before. I talked to them all the time. I'd, I mean, I lived a quad, we're in the same quad as him. And Mr. Dom definitely, he just helped me, he guided me, okay. so. When I first got here, I, I felt kind of lost. It, it was a new environment. I, it was just completely different from what I used to know. And so I was a little bit lost. And so Tack Officer Clark kind of acted as a father figure for me. Oh. And it allowed me to just become more comfortable in the environment. And mm -hmm. he's a Tack, that's literally a teacher, advisor, and counselor. And he's definitely acted as that my entire time here. My freshman and sophomore year, I had the tech officer, uh, Sergio Malnado. Uh, Sergio Malnado was like probably, like, in terms of overall campus, probably like the biggest influence I ever had. Uh, he showed me more than just discipline, kind of like just overall like life tactics in general, like just how yeah. to like how to succeed and how to be successful. He was really compassionate as well, like always, always like no matter what he was doing. He always said that like he didn't want to do all the paperwork and stuff. He just loved talking to us. <laughs> so you young men all came from different schools. On the academic side, what difference do you see in your classes and with your teachers than uh, what you had experienced at your previous schools? Yeah. So at my old school, I honestly just felt like they didn't care. I mean, I, I, I was struggling through my academics. I had no, no figure to respect. I had it was, it was larger classes. I, I feel like my teachers, you know, I, I was struggling. They didn't care. 
Nothing happened, nothing changed. There was no time for me to go talk to them, no time after class, no time, no office hours. And, and when I came here, I'd say the academic side of things, it was Mr. Stewart and Mr. Hooker and Ms. LeCobb, those three. And they're just some of the most caring people you'll ever meet. I just remember um, going into tutorial and like talking to Mr. Stewart some days. I'd just be walking over through and I'd just stop in Mr. Uh, Mr. Stewart's classroom, say hi. He'd help me with my work or I'd go to his office hours and he was just really considerate and, and helpful. And that made a, a massive impact in my motivation um, because I felt actually supported and like they cared about me. At my old school, uh, it was still a small classroom size. I went to still like a, like a small middle school. It was still like roughly the same amount of people in a class, like 16-ish. So that never really changed for me. The only thing that did change kind of was like the teachers like honestly really, really cared about like the kids in the classroom. Uh, my probably biggest example, which might be kind of funny to you guys, is Mr. C. So Mr. C, he's kind of quiet, kind of reserved. And but like there's one thing that is true, and that's his passion for like teaching the students and helping people learn. Mm -hmm. Like if you go to him with questions, if you like just ask him about anything, like once you get to know him a little bit, he's always there for you. He's like your biggest supporter. Mm -hmm. uh, and then secondly, he kind of also showed me like the importance of always being honest in your work. So he said like what, what teachers look for, like they look for the effort. They don't like necessarily like like grades are one thing, but I want to see like effort in my classroom. So if you're giving me like the effort and all that type of stuff, that's what I care about. And that ultimately led to like me winning the department award last year for chemistry. So, yeah. I, I forgot to say my favorite teacher. <laughs> Mr. C is my favorite teacher. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. So, um, I mean, right when I came here, I initially did well in the academics. And partially that was because I uh, decided that, well, another thing put in place by my parents was I needed to maintain a 3.8 GPA when I was going back home. <laughs> so I came, I came here and I was like, okay, I got to hit it hard. I got to do well. And um, it was pretty easy for me just because the teachers were here to help and the system around you with the structure makes it so easy to learn and study. I had never studied before. I would learn in class, go home, watch military videos, go back to school and then get quizzed on something I didn't really know. So when we go after class to tutorial to learn with the teacher or CQ time to study on your own, it was so beneficial for my learning Favorite teacher has to be Mr. Rodriguez. There is nobody more genuine on this campus. I mean, I've seen that guy drive to get us in and out on his birthday for office hours just because we did well in a quiz. And he happens I mean, to be an alum too. Yep, and he is, he is the nicest, most hardworking, caring person here. And he's definitely an inspiration to everyone he teaches. That's great. For me, at my old high school, it, there was a, about 4,000 students at that school. Oh. And uh, yeah, That's I know. That's a lot. I know. <laughs> and each class had uh, like 40 people in it. And so if you wanted support from a teacher or you wanted some extra help, there was none. There was no way you can go after school to get help. It just did not exist. And so yeah. once I came to this school, it was like a total change because all the teachers were willing to stay and help you throughout anything you don't understand. And especially someone who is helping with that is uh, Mr. Johnson or her, the kids like to call him Mr. Uh, Papa, Papa J. Papa, Papa J. Papa J. Yeah. Uh, he just helped me understand some uh, concepts that I never thought I'd be able to understand. Mm -hmm. it, he's helped me. No other teacher can teach me like that guy. He, I love him. In, in terms of the academic side of, of life on campus, living on campus is one of the biggest yeah. things. Oh. Oh, the fact it so that, much easier. Yes, the fact so that, much easier. you know, yeah. I, I can walk one minute and I can go talk to Mr. C, mm -hmm. or I can walk 30 seconds, go talk to Miss Mitchell, or I can walk down the hall and talk to people taking the same yeah. classes as me yeah. at any time of the day. I can go talk to any of the student. I can go talk, I mean, me and Grant, we'll just see each other at like <laughs> five in the morning and we'll be like, good morning, <laughs> hey, yeah. how you doing? Yeah. Both of you like working on Calc or something, or yeah. last year it was uh, A push. Oh, yeah. um, and it just, sure. living on campus is mm. one of the biggest things. Mm. And just having access to all your friends around you, mm. the teachers, it's, uh, yeah. Especially for like group projects. Yeah. 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 Group yeah. Kind of if you difference. assign me to do a group project with two people I've never met, not gonna it's do. not gonna get done. Yeah. No. Like how do you expect me to find this person's phone number? Like I'm not gonna look up their name in the directory. Yeah. Um, I had no clue and I'm like, I come here and it's like, you just knock on knock the door. Knock on the door. Hey, walk down the street. You want to work, work on this now? We got to have it done by tomorrow. All right, cool. Yeah. It's done. <laughs> Easy. It's no longer a hassle trying to find these random people we've never met before and do yeah. it. So along those it. lines, what, what would, advice would you give a student who's not as excited to go to school here because they're going to be living away from home or 
Yeah, so I'm uh, out of the four of us. I live the furthest. I'm in Connecticut. So it was a pretty j- big jump coming all the way across the country and just being with people I've never met before and having my entire family back in the East Coast. But I was lucky and fortunate enough to have a roommate who had the exact same goals as me to be an Army Ranger. And we both were kind of just like, all right, this is pretty cool. You want to do this? I want to do this. Let's both work hard and get it going from the start. So we would both, we'd work out with each other, do homework with each other, whatever. And um, we both inspired each other to do better. If you're not excited about coming here, you have to change your attitude because it's all about the buy-in. If you come in here saying, okay, I'm going to do well. I'm going to get this GPA, achieve this leadership position, um, be in these clubs, sports, you're going to do it and you're going to enjoy doing it. But when you come in here, setting yourself up for failure, saying, oh, I don't want to get in uniform. I don't want to go to formation. You're, you're not going to do anything good and you're, gonna, you're not going to enjoy your time here. My biggest advice to people, I mean, when I first came here, after I was accepted, um, and that Friday when my mom drove me down, they gave my mom the parent login. And my mom walked over, and as we were going past the trash can next to Senior Lawn, my mom looked at me, took the parent login, and threw it away. Nice. And she said, this is your life. I'm giving you a chance to be independent and choose what you do with your life. Mm. And my biggest advice to somebody coming here is to take that chance and to realize being here is your opportunity Mm -hmm. to take charge of your life, to do what you want to do with your life. You are independent. I I live in Washington. I'm 12,070 miles away from home. (laughs) If you take advantage of that opportunity, it allows you to forge your character, forge who you are, and forge your future. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit different for me. I only live about an hour away. But when I was a a little freshman, being away from home for two to three weeks, it was something different that I was not excited for. But when I got there, I realized that every single person on this campus is trying to help you be successful in your career in the school and after the school. You can't be scared of it because you need to be able to accept um, all the help everyone's giving you. And another thing is all the cadets here, there's a very strong brotherhood between everyone. If you're going through something, your brothers will be there for you or attack officers will be there for you. Everyone here is here to help you. So when I first showed up on campus, I met Staff Sergeant Nixon first and then I said goodbye to my mom. I live, I live a short drive away, so it wasn't the hardest for me because I could yeah. come home, hey, I'm going home and then I'd go home. But I met Sun Ding Hang from Shanghai. So coming from Shanghai, speaking no English, a little bit, little bit scared. So <laughs> I introduced myself because we were like living right next to each other. I say hi. And then slowly over time, like his English gets better. Like we start to build a friendship and like over time, like his attitude, like his homesickness and stuff slowly like died down. And like the biggest thing I could say about like going away from home and being with a bunch of people we've never met before is you don't realize like you're leaving one family to join another. So son, son left his family in Shanghai and came here. And it's been so strong to the point where because of COVID, obviously the borders were closed, son couldn't Mm -hmm. go home for, so he didn't see his family for three years. But Sun developed such a tolerance to just understanding that he's with a new family, that he was able to go home with friends on the weekends, even though he lived in a whole different country. What you don't realize is like when you go to the academy, you're going to build like a tolerance, like a certain like a maturity and a skill set that certain people don't have. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, as as the colonel said, we're very proud of you, gentlemen. It's still early in the year. We know that you still have a lot more peaks to climb and and help us through. But we we appreciate you inviting us down uh, as well tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank Thank you, guys. We're going to have some s'mores. Good night, guys. Yeah, there's that. Yeah. You're going to burn, a, burn oh, another yeah, one, JPA. Jenkins? Hey, it's yeah, on fire yeah, every bro. time. I don't know why. Because you you got to put it there. No, 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 no. no, no. no you put it you there. Forgot, you forgot you were burning it.